Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're out to say welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Mushoku Tensei Season 2, Episode 17. Uh, last episode, we watched two episodes, and it was great. They went together pretty well. I loved everything that happened. Seeing Rui Jurd for the time that we did was extraordinary. Um, but now we are dealing with the arrival of Norn and Aisha. Uh, specifically on Norn's front, there are a lot of unresolved feelings, mm -hmm. I I'd say. And I think that that's probably what we are going to continue to focus on at the moment. Right, I would agree with that. Um, Aisha's feelings and issues and kind of the things that Aisha will have to work through with the family and her involvement in it and how she might view herself in that family is already starting to be mended because she yeah. was so vocal about it immediately. Like, do you view me as your real sister? Do mm -hmm. you view my mom as a concubine? Like, how do you feel my brother in front of me about me and my existence? And so we're already, you know, in a good place there with that relationship and with how Aisha feels about herself. Yeah. Norn is still obviously a giant uh, question mark here in terms of like, what are we going to do about this relationship? How is she viewing the choice that Rudy let her go live in the dorms? How is she feeling about actually being alone and having been given what she asked for? Here? Yeah. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Oh, God. Does he worry that they bullied her? I mean, he would know, right? Yeah. Damn. Wow, the fact that he's thinking about that. I want to save her from it. Still my sister. I wonder what his face really looked like. I thought we were going to go to her room. Okay. Do we even know for sure she's being bullied or are we just going to come out of the gate? Yeah, like, I... Uh, that could be so bad for her. I, okay, definitely there's potential of like Rudy being overreactive out of protection, but... I also have faith in Rudy in terms of, like, where he would or wouldn't meddle. And his choice here. You know, he could be making a choice. Uh, last episode, neither of the girls knew that Norn was his little sister. So here he could be like, hey, I just wanted to say, like, please take care of my little sister. Establish that he, this figure at this school, is the older brother to yeah. her. That could be a safer way to try to protect her without completely coming out and being like, if any of you are bullying her, like deal with me but like the fear or like the surprise of, pe of people looking at rudy's expression definitely makes you think that it is not unsubstantiated you know like right but he is working himself up through remembering his own past yeah. here but when he opened the door his face didn't look that kind of contorted we'll as, as it was as he was walking through the hallway and the people were stopping and looking at him okay Talking about what's gonna happen, we're gonna figure out right now. I know, we're about <laughs> to find out. Empty seat. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Jesus. Wow. Anyone who turned a blind eye is just as guilty. Jesus, look at his face. Listen to the score. She's not like me? どういうこと? 
How hard does she actually try, you know? They've all been comparing her to him. Already. God damn it. That was fucking clean. And he knows about people making attempts to bring you out. He probably feels like it's futile. He wants to. Do you feel like, to everybody else who knows Rudy, this feels like a glimpse of somebody they don't know? The last couple episodes, even, that there's things about him that they don't know. ジョキョ。アリエルの演説で助手寮の生徒の気を引いてもらう。その間に俺が侵入し、ノルンに会うという作戦だ。アリエル様に感謝しないとな。大丈夫。ノルンは俺が何とかしてみせる。This is pretty extravagant. Brings you back to when he was outside the girls' dorm before. Yeah. I'm really anxious. I want everything to be okay. I feel hopeful. Wow. Looking at himself. What can he do? What can he say? Orega Hikikomotatoki. Aniki a Oreno Heani Kita. Anotoki. Aniki a Oreni Mukai. Arecore to Sero Mutsketa. O my Yuri Motto Tsraimeni Ate Hitomo. Ima wa Tsraika Mosirenaiga. Nigereba, Zutto Nigetsuker Kotonina. Nanimo Yikais Kotonak. Tete taking him Mushita. Convince myself someone like him. She probably would convince herself of the same. これがあの時の兄貴の気持ちか。あの時以降、兄貴が俺に接触してくることはなかった。兄貴が何を考えたかはわからない。だけど、兄貴から俺に戻ってこられないだろう。助かってはダメだ。いつからだろう。この人を恐ろしいと思うようになったのは誰よりも私を大切にしてくれていたお父さん。こんな人が家族だなんて認められるはずなかった。私はこの人を嫌いになった。今もきっとお父さんは必死にお母さんを探しているは
this roommate? Like the design.の人のことがわからない。心配だから。勘弁してやってくれよ。私あの人嫌い。ルリーもね。辛かったんだよ。父によく言われた言葉だ。だと思うのは。私には理解できなかった。もしかしたらあの人は私が思ってるような人ではない
I was definitely nervous, obviously, because, you know, big talks are always nerve wracking, emotional, like people breaking down their walls in front of each other is always going to be something to be nervous about and wary because it, it, it really is that you're opening your heart to someone and that is scary and watching two people get ready to or be about to do that, you, you know that that what that gravity is that those people will be doing. And so there was a nerve wracking feeling, but I also went into that episode, especially from the first couple minutes, just coming into this real hopeful feeling before Rudy knocked on that door. I was like, this is the episode. This is the time. It is now. Everything has accumulated into making this moment be the now. And I am so glad that this, that I'm about to see this. I, I felt anxious at that point. I felt anxious it, when everything was happening still because, like, I don't, I'm happy I did. I, I feel like uh, I'm an idiot right now in terms of putting, getting some concrete thoughts together. Um, but I think the, the directing is what did it this episode. Um, every time that I expected something to happen in the order that it did, it did it to the 10th degree of that. Um, an example of it is one of the most important things that this episode gave us was Norn's perspective and point of view. And throughout the order of events we were given Norn's perspective, I was like, really curious once it started how how they were going to incorporate two moments and they did so not chronologically and not in order and those two moments being the the, the moment that rudy tells norn that he wants her to come back to to visit home and then any interaction that happened between rui and norn and the way that they halted on them and then delivered them lastly was absolutely mm -hmm. substantial it was beautiful and fuck i uh there's so many moments this episode that are so good and i'm sorry for the lack of chronological order that we're <laughs> going to be using um but one that just meant everything to me was uh the idea that rudy continuously seeing himself in Norn was incredible, but it needed to have the realization that that can't be what, that can't be the route you're going to take if you are going to actually try to help Norn and needs to see Norn for her own person and not just see himself in Norn. Someone you and, don't know. And on the opposite pairing with it, Norn only looking at Rudy and seeing that version of Paul and then that being torn away to see the vulnerable Rudy that was in front of her. There was specifically from uh, Norn's perspective, there was this amazing scene that Norn pulls over. It's about 16 minutes and 45 seconds into the episode. Norn pulls down the blanket over her eye line and then you can see like a flashback of her and Paul on a bed Amazing, sitting talking beautiful. about Rudy and it being lifted up from that same blanket. And not only are they going to fucking do me with that, but they're going to bookend it and close it out the same way they started it. No one here will help me. And then the blanket being pulled down again. The isolation, man, the fear that Norn had. And not being one not wanting to be kicked out, not wanting to be thrown out. It was so cold outside. But really, it's like, when she said that, like, yes, she was shaking to the temperature outside, but it's also an emotional cold. Like, she doesn't want to be alone. She doesn't want these people to not want her, even if she currently doesn't like them or feels like it is hard to get close to them or she might not be ready to get close to them at the moment. She still wants to be wanted. She still wants to be desired and have that place to slowly warm up by the fire to them, you know? And 
wow, I think that Norn in this episode emotionally felt so incredibly real and is just another tick in the box of Mashoku Tensei handling emotions well and panic and feelings of inadequacy and struggles with the family anxiety. dynamic anxiety no one sitting there grabbing her stomach mm -hmm. but like in in between the anxious of talking to her teacher and seeing her now and that alone time the physical manifestations Jesus. that can be caused by you know an emotional state or mental health issues is so real and i think that one of my favorite parts that felt so incredibly real is that most of her focus, when you boil everything down, when she boils everything down and comes out with what is happening to her, it is that she doesn't know what to do. She wants to do something. She wants to reach out. She wants this to be a certain way. She wants to desire to know him better. But she is, is she's getting so in her head. She's hearing all these things. She's remembering these memories from the past, this hatred that she's held for him. But she knows and she's come into this maturity emotionally that she's aware that there is an image of him that she's holding on to that other people keep telling her, you know, your brother isn't the way that you view him. And she knows that her father was able to rid himself of those punches and be able to come to terms and mend things with Rudy again and that her father was coming to her being like you know cut him some slack and and both Rui Jordan and her father were like things will make sense to you more someday and it really just boils down to her own feelings about herself here in terms of like why can't I just get over this? Why can't I just see him how everyone else does? I'm mad at myself because I'm seeing him this way. What should I do here? How do I fix it? How do I be as strong and mature as the person I idolize and love being my father who created a safe space for me? How do I reach my hand out when I don't know for sure that there's gonna be a hand there that's gonna accept it? And that someone loves me back when I don't know this person. All I know is the memories I had of him and what everyone else tells me. I don't know him. I don't know if he is the safe space that everyone is alluding me to believe. And if I reach my hand out, will I be alone? But I want to reach my hand out because I want to be proud of myself. I want to know that I did something, that I tried to mend something, that I saw him as family and I gave him a chance and I let him know me. And when it boiled down to like her just really thinking about herself there and discarding all of everything else, like, and what should I do? I was like, that moment just felt so real, at least in how just, it felt more like relatable to me, I guess. Mm. I, uh, I think that one of the most prominent things to me was the buildup of expectation and, what what you think you should do from Rudy's perspective initially recounting everything that that his brother did and seeing himself in that and seeing that this is how must this is how he must have felt and through that you're examining and at the same time ixnaying any of these ideas of relatability that you can try to give to Norn or any uh th they used a specific a specific word for it but it's like uh like no normal attempts at trying to motivate somebody common sense common sense common there you sense. go common sense arguments and for as soon as i saw that this. i was like oh like, of course that wouldn't actually work the examples of it that they were giving were like great examples because it's her, his brother being like don't you can take your time going back to school it's fine let's just go out and get something to eat right now right and before and, he was at that it was other people have it worse yeah and through doing that, you're not only looking at Rudy re-examining what his brother was attempting to do and the nature it was coming from, but you're also realizing that you can't fucking say that right now to Norn. And when you're getting further and further into the conversation, that like simultaneously, Norn and Rudy are both thinking and wanting to just 
start it out in in say in saying that I don't fucking know you. I don't know that I don't have a pre I had a preconception of you, but I don't know you. And Norn trying to open it up with Big Brother, but Rudy being like Norn. I the second it was so fucking awesome that the second. You see Rudy's face. We've seen him so angry this episode and so passionate. But the second he breaks down and shows the emotion that he does when he says that he doesn't know her, Nord immediately in her monologue is like, he's not going to hit me. Like, he's not going to punch me. Like, any type of fear residually that you'd have of this, because that's your first interaction really with your brother and what he did to Paul, that just you see, oh my God, just Rudy saying that in his expression, it instantly gets you in f a thousand steps closer to who he actually is just by the line of, I don't know who you are. It's putting the, each other on the same level. Nobody's above anybody. No one is, it's, yeah, it, it's, above it sets, it sets Rudy and Norn's relationship to be unique and closer than any other relationship within this entire series and the best part of it is that they didn't fucking spend all night talking about all the issues and trying to fix it it was that the awareness of neither of them knowing each other but wanting to and the awareness that norn isn't alone and Norn feeling that security and openness with Rudy gives Norn what she needs to be able to do things for herself. And relationships aren't built in one night. And I think that's another healthy example from the show is they don't spend all night like, okay, now that we've decided we don't, we realize we don't know each other and we want to come to a place where we're both reaching out, like get to know each other better and be there for each other let's hear everything all of our traumas and all of our reasons why we might have been uncomfortable with the other person now like you know snap our fingers like it's just so much better that it was like a we've come to a good page here now let's start building a foundation um i feel like if you i feel like it'd be very helpful to a lot of people that maybe don't have their own struggles with anxiety or just being really in their head uh self-hatred uh or ever experience something similar to rudy or norn in the show it'd be so helpful to just show them the couple minutes of like rudy remembering his brother's attempts at reaching out to him to then what rudy ends up doing yeah and just show them that because there are so many people that just think like they come in there like, yeah, I can rescue you from your problems by showing you that they aren't as big as you think they are. And like, yes, in a way, it's like the problems, you know, aren't as big as you think they are. Sure. But that's not what you want to like. That's not going to help the person. If anything, that'll make them feel embarrassed and have more self-hatred because you're telling them that the problems that they have are so small they should be able to get past them faster they're gonna hate themselves even more if you say that who cares if it's common sense that other people in the world might be in a worse situation currently can you than them? imagine like based off of like what my past month has been and like what people <laughs> if i came like, to you and was like no what people have come to me saying like mm -hmm. in that similar of a vein mm -hmm. and like god damn man like me sitting here watching that shit i'm like fuck like the people when someone is dealing with a mental health crisis or a very vulnerable moment you do not meet them with a i know things and i'm gonna sweep you off your feet energy you come to them just no 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 like no i like because that because if you phrase it that way i think it it kind of throws shade at the people who do come at it like like how Rudy's brother did. And mm -hmm. I don't think that that should be done because it's not about that. It's about the intention doing it. Right. It's not their fault if they don't, they've never experienced it. Only those who've experienced it for the most part know what it's like and how they should treat other people. You shouldn't feel fucking bad or like that's, that's normal and that's okay. But it's great to have the perspective of, I, I'm trying to help. Like, I can see that you're hurting and I think I can do something to help. Even if it's not right, 
I take that o- over nothing, you know? And I like, agree with you. I'm obviously a positive intention is better than nothing. Yeah. I wasn't trying to throw shade in the way like those people are horrible. If they yeah, do yeah, that, yeah. it's more so like that isn't the way that is best for the person. That yeah. you, If you truly have positive intentions, then your desire would be to learn from your past attempt and improve your attempt to help that person in the future. Yeah. A true person with positive intentions would be fully okay with hearing how they could better help and reach out to the person that they love. But not everybody knows what would help, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that this, like in this episode, it's like a very specific case of that because like, because of how beautiful the buildup and the story has been, Rudy knows what what to do and say here, which is kind of nothing and that I don't know what to say. And sharing in that with somebody in a mutual way is something that I was I've never been lucky enough to have, like in terms of like Rudy and Norn are both going through some shit, you know, and have gone through some shit. And like if somebody comes to me when I, when I'm at my worst and they're like, what can I do to help? I'm probably going to be like, I don't fucking know. Make everything bet. Like, like what the fuck? Like I, it's impossible, but especially when you're in that to know exactly what it is, it's going to fix but, you. It's like, if I are, if I knew what would fix me, I would have done it already. <laughs> but damn, it is so fucking powerful with how they've managed to handle it. Because it's like what I was saying earlier, like, because of where they're at and because of this moment they've set themselves up to have a relationship more specific and unique and close than Mm -hmm. any other relationship that rudy's ever had before and like and and that's not to like throw shade at his other like relationships it's just like it's it's a different relationship it's different and god every relationship should be different Every relationship is built on different events and experiences and feelings and two very separate people communicating with each other and getting to know each other. Therefore, every relationship is going to be incredibly different. And if anything, that's a compliment to this show. If each individual relationship comes with its individuality. I need to be a better big brother. Is that what, yeah, you take out of this? Yeah, like like, I'm trying to be like, analytical and critical about it and also be funny about it um but i think that it's a like it's an interesting comparison like obviously when watching any show and it's like resonating with you as much as mishoku tensei has with us i think Mm -hmm. um it's it when it's hitting you really hard like it's hard not to relate to certain aspects and i didn't know like i like i have two biological siblings and like i have never lived with them Mm -hmm. right but because of that it's almost like like i I, like i'm relating that to the rudy norn relationship like the same you have the same parents as this person but you never grew up with them you don't know each other but you hear a lot about each other yeah and so it's like trying to like meet that person without any of the preconceptions in your head about them because you want to see them as uh, as the person that they actually are and I'm sure that they would the same way. It's just, it's such a niche um, thing to bring into focus for a story. And like you said, holy shit, this isn't the first time Shoku Tensei has like dipped its hand into dealing with mental health or anxiety. And it's my favorite thing about the series, which is how they handle it. It's fucking extraordinary. I would say that that's my standout reason why I love this show is the handling of things of that nature. Uh, like Rudy coming out of this interaction and being like, but I didn't do anything. I did nothing. And it's like, honey, you didn't do nothing. And it's like to him, he's like, but I didn't say anything that would scoop her out of it. I didn't rescue her. Like he has a line earlier in the episode being like, I am going to uh, save her from it. I want to save her from it is a line that he said at the very beginning of the episode. And yeah. so obviously, if that's the mentality he went into this with, he probably pictured he's going to, as the big brother, in learning from what his brother attempted to do and how he felt about that as the person in the state that Norn's in, he's going to be able to take all these factors and come up with this thing that is just going to save her from all of this. But what you really need to do or what is like real is that like 
reminder that a person is a real person and needs to develop their own coping skills themselves and be able to save themselves because exactly. longevity rudy has been able to figure out how to help himself you know to some extent he obviously compliments norn with being like oh my goodness i wish i had been able to do what she Ooh. had done back in my past life and it's like you are giving her what she needs to be able to be what you wish you could have been yeah like the the rudy like not doing anything it's so it speaks so loudly because of the like the, the feeling that rudy has after he says those words right it's not like i'm gonna make sure she's gonna be okay i'm gonna make sure she's gonna be all right it's like with the like i didn't do anything but I'm, I know that she's going to be okay now. Like, it's like that assuredness that it, it, that's what speaks volumes. And you're right. I'm going to try to find uh, the the line that Rudy was like, if, if I was more like her in my life. I think it was um, once she said good morning to him that he was thinking like that. Good morning. 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 She's a little more cheerful since that night. Nor wouldn't tell me anything. In the end, I couldn't do anything. Still. Still. I'm I'm sure sure she'll she'll be be all right. right I bet she sorted her feelings out on her own. What a girl. She pulled off something I never managed in my past life. Which is, if I could have been more like Norn back then... Man, you know, like, okay, if I could have been more like Norn back then, it's obvious that, like, because of what Rudy did and his presence there is it it gave Norn the opportunity and strength to do more than Rudy did. But Rudy, what gave Norn the added strength to do so was what Paul said and wanting to be like Paul and wanting to be like Rudy. But the only reason Paul said what he did is because Rudy was the way that he was and did what he did. Mm -hmm. So it's fucked beyond belief that we live in a reality that a lot of the times it takes people who have been through a fuck ton of shit to be able to help people who are trying to deal with it and manage it now. Mm -hmm. I mean, that really... In a perfect world, that wouldn't have to be the case. We see it through Rudy's brother, but it's... Right. And um, I think that bringing up Rudy's brother again brings me, like, obviously we've already complimented it. I'm just going to phrase it in a different way now. Because I thought of another way to phrase it. Another perspective to to look at it at. Another fancy way f- to, to say a compliment to this show is that true trauma, like, trauma in your life is not something that a season worth of anime a character can uh, accomplish triumphing over their trauma and completely unpacking it. Trauma is something that is slowly unpacked throughout your life. As you gain new perspectives, you meet new people, you go through new experiences, you remember more things from your past. And as we saw with Norn and Rudy, and we've seen with Rudy, is that memories now gain new context. You have a new way that a lens, new lens you might look at them through, a new way that you might interpret someone's words or realize what they truly meant. Maybe the intention behind their words where before you were more focused on their words and the fact that it you wanted to spit on them. And I think that that's something that this show does is that we, from season one, we did start obviously with the bullying. The like That was the first thing that we started to kind of unpack with Rudy, his image of himself, his feeling of self-hatred and inadequacy and fear of other people and relating to them and connecting with them. That's something that we were first delving into. And now with this core two, we're starting to get into the family dynamic. Rudy is kind of being put into this parental role. He's being put into this role of trust He's being given trust and respect by other people. He's being given that by his family. He's being given not only this role as like role model, but this and big brother, but almost this role as like 
current caretaker of of young minds who are going to grow into their own individual people and that is a lot of responsibility and from this he's being able to look back into a new perspective even more so of like how his brother or his parents felt when he was going through what he was going through and they wanted to help him maybe that was their feelings and their true intentions it's just how much they would want to help him and now he's in those shoes he's he's getting to live these new experiences and these new feelings that he never once lived before therefore he's able to gain a new perspective about his past he's able to unpack more than he could have before because this would not have been available to Rudy season one this these ideas and thoughts him thinking about his brother this way was not available to him then and that is fully okay it's the same way that the that the brother wasn't able to complete to, to do what rudy did because he didn't feel what rudy's mm -hmm. felt right but... it's the, the exact same thing and it's totally okay there's no timeline on yeah. growing and learning mm -hmm. and being able to grow as a person emotionally unpack trauma deal with mental health issues there's no timeline on it that you have to get it done and it all figured out in one therapy session but it's so fa it's so wonderful that but like rudy is like i didn't we didn't talk about it i didn't do anything for her norn didn't really say much at all in response to Rudy, but it gave Rudy something. It gave Rudy the fucking thought of if Nana Hoshi ever makes her way back, I'm gonna give her a letter from and my how brother. How big is that? Like, the second that we see Rudy knock on Norn's door and we hear his old voice come back, we are immediately within Rudy's old older brother's perspective, point of view, the entire time going forward until Rudy points it out himself. And the idea that like okay think about this episode as a whole we start out this episode as we did season one in looking back at what happened to rudy with that hate mm -hmm. for the potential of bullying and what happened to rudy we saw it in his face how fucking mad he was and he wasn't going to let this happen and through the episode we end off with a point of rudy not even focusing on what got him into his room or what made him stay in his room but what he could have done to get out of the room and acknowledging the strength it took Norn to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. God damn it. it is, it's so nice to have him, like, like you said, his focus was on a different area of what had happened to him. It was on the aftermath, the being a shut in. Like when he's thinking in this episode about his past being bullied, he is not in his own world about himself. He is angry because it might be happening to someone he loves and he wants to save them. That is why he's remembering these things. We've already seen him unpack this, his feelings about it and deal with it him, himself and through all of his experiences in the show thus far. The true change, like a true sign of growth here, other than all the other signs, like you said, is the fact that he wants to do something about his old life, his old world. He had, he, when he met Nanahoshi, Nanahoshi's like, I want to go back there. I love this life more. I don't want to get to know this world. I don't want to get to know the people in it. Through the last couple episodes, what have we seen? Nanahoshi start to feel something for this world, or at least some of the people in it, and be happy being there for at least little moments in time. And so the perfect thing to have happen for Rudy after that is for him to also gain some amount of care back for his past world, the world that he came from, and care for the people in it and his old life enough to think that not for him, like for both himself and his brother, he wants a message to be said. Like the growth there of something that I would have never imagined this character would have ever thought to do anything with his old world and his old life, especially upon meeting Nanahoshi, he's like, no, nope, I really like it here. I like who I've become here. I don't want to go back in thought or in re reality. Man, uh, Rudy, like, even being like, 
I'm 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 sorry for like acknowledging it hasn't been easy on Norn here with everything every interaction she's had mm -hmm. not making sense to her based off of everything she knows but fuck even clicking through it like it just hits me again and you know the best part really truthfully is when um oh rudy says that i'm here for you and asks to stay like the expression that Norn has when she's like, I know my brother won't hit me. And the way that they're looking at each other, I talked about it to you like a week ago in terms of like seeing somebody like wh when you're looking at somebody and they're looking back at you and you guys are having a conversation about anything and how that is different from sitting across the table from somebody and looking at somebody, but actually like, like looking at them and trying to like be present and understand what they mean and see how you guys are on the same level and the same page and that like fuck like I, it's just there's something about it that's so perfectly depicted here i'm like how like the way, the way they phrased it too right face each other yeah that that's what it is and that is one of the most beautiful things that anyone can do for anyone no matter if they're going through something or not is be able to face each other we've had in in a non obviously not this example at all in terms of someone literally currently in a moment of distress i mean once we got into our marriage life with sylphie there have been moments of truly facing each other in a healthy romantic couple way yeah. in terms of talking about uh what would we do if we can't have kids what are our priorities as a couple and how do we feel about each other in terms of our future and truly facing each other in that way and being kind of vulnerable there. And that's something that you can do for someone in distress too that is some of the most helpful is that like, I'm a human too, man. And I'm right here. And like, I might not know the right words to say to you right now, but dude, I'm here. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine how fucking smart you must be to be able to pull this moment off in the way that it was like let, let's think about it right let, like work it backwards at the sense of you want to be able to build an atmosphere where rudy and norn as a as a brother and sister can get past that what they're dealing with in a realistic feeling way and come out on the other end the way that they did i'm like okay first of all the, the the correlation of memories and what Rudy's dealing with and bring to the table here that needs to be brought up how do we sell that man I don't know if it would really hit the same if it was all taking place within Rudy's house we need to separate Rudy from Norn so Norn has her own independence to then be shut into her room so it has nothing it the basis is completely removed for it put her in the dormitory a place she should be feeling maybe comfortable or more safe and yeah because it's what she's asked for yeah and then you work backwards from that and you give the space from the time that she was moved in to now that there's this like it when rudy's knocking on the door and the entire buildup of how much work went into getting rudy here really goes to show how shut in norn truthfully is and how distant she truthfully is based off of the effort to even get here and i think within its own right that's what every person who did reach out to rudy felt within his room even though it wasn't on a campus in a dorm that was protected by or not protected but just you needed to have an excuse like a conference to get everybody out of and having god damn man i i it, it's just so brilliant i think that the conversation where it currently is at it, it brings back obviously we saw it in how norm felt about being told she could live in the dorms i remember when we first saw that scene we spent a bit of our discussion talking about like in terms of parenting choices like what do you really do there because either choice there might lead into some negative feelings there's it's like a 50 50 chance that there is going to be negatives with either of these choices that you make 
let me live in the dorms. Oh, you don't love me enough to have me stay? Make me stay here. Oh, you don't trust me enough to let me spread my wings and leave and you're going to try to control me? Now I hate you. Like, either way, Rudy was kind of, like, obviously he made the choice that I probably would have made in his shoes, which is, like, she's asking me this. She's feeling like she can, you know, be honest with me. I know that the dorms are safe. I'm right here. I'm telling her I'm still right here. That's probably the choice I would have made too in his shoes. Um, and I, I love that we got her perspective, even though I, we figured that that's how she might have felt in that moment. I still like that we were shown that she really did feel like, yes, that's what I wanted. But why do yeah, I feel sad I that he said it? Does he not like want me to stay? And the fact that we got to see it was so great, even though it's like we all probably knew that that might be how she felt about it or might be how she came out of that, even though it's what she wanted. And just being shown that anyway makes me very happy. Man, I wish we got to see more of Norn's roommate. Bird I know, roommate. like Harpy esque roommate. There was another shot we got. And she's of like, her. wings. Yeah, there it is. Oh, uh, can you get back to it? We'll see. It's like right, I think it was before Norn clutches her stomach. Was it before this? I think it was after this, right? There yeah. we go, there we go. It's like a, oh my god, so cool. It reminds like me of Like literal Wind Waker. wings. Yeah, and I like I'm the like, black hair. How, what is the choice there to give me a very intriguing, unlike any other character in this series... In an emotional episode where we're supposed to be focused on Norn. Do we know what this is? Do we know if this is a manga? Do we know if this is a light novel? I feel like I, I have a memory a of thinking it was a light novel or being told by a mod that it was. But what if, like, I wonder how it was written in terms of Norn's POV within, if it is a light novel, within the novel. Like, what if it was written in a way that was its own chapter and we see these interactions not through the way that we did here but through like norn's own chapter so we get to see like and meet her roommate within that you mm -hmm. know variety because that was Maybe. a very interesting looking character i do think it's a choice though to give an incredibly to the eye possibly distracting main character energy type character in quick little glimpses in an emotional setting that is going to have me be like, wait, what? That person has wings when I'm supposed to be focused on the emotion of, obviously it didn't trip me up too bad. I was able to continue being immersed, but I do think it's funny as a choice. Uh, I believe it must actually be the actual roommate and not just like, like some type of art that has been done either in a manga or a cover of a light novel that this is in fact what the roommate looks like and they will have more of a presence later because if not then why <laughs> what a fucking great day <laughs> like I, day. I i this is one of my favorite if not my favorite episodes of mashoku tensei and obviously you can't have it without the rest, right? It doesn't yeah. exist without the rest. The whole but, story, you can't cut oh one aspect God. out of this story. Uh, it needs to have all of it. And there are there's complexities to it. It needs to have all of them. It needs to have the negatives. It needs to have things that we were like, ooh, about. Yep. And it needs to have all of it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the happy, the cry, the ooh, what's this? It needs to have all of it because that's just freaking life all right god damn it i feel this is one of the episodes of a show that i'm like whenever we stop talking i'm i feel like it deserves to be talked about way more and it like and that only comes with an educated take and rewatch which we do not have at the moment but <laughs> yeah. Because we're talking out. after just the score it. was phenomenal. Sorry, I fuck that was not lost to me. This entire episode is phenomenal, specifically the directing. Period. Yeah, the one, the specifically, specifically the sheet scene. Yeah, well, the, the honestly, like the use of sheets 
this oh, episode were fucking crazy. Yeah, and okay. when they were determining how opaque it was for each other's point of view, it was all intentional. Oh, and the looking out the window, and then the window the turns into yeah, the memory. memory of him and his brother again. Oh, some beautiful choices. All right, that's all I have you. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.